Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman and George Evans, and starring Stephen Murray, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> All men feel like prisoners at times, particularly if they're married. There you are, stuck at home, knowing that the boys are whooping it up down at the local, and you're stuck at home with the mother-in-law on one side, the wife on the other. I know what you mean. <laughs> I was trapped once at a dance with this great, big, beautiful, bouncy bird. <laughs> <laughs> and generous with it. <laughs> I could hardly wait to get her on the floor. <laughs> Gosh, the frustration. All right, Mr. Phillips, uh, what went wrong? Well, six to four, he took her outside to the car park and showed that I was yo-yo went up and down in the dark. <laughs> you were peeping. He always does. That's how the chief makes a good living on the side. I'll oh, be quiet, the lot of you. Well, there's more to escaping from the mother-in-law, the wife, or a dance, especially if you're in the Royal Navy, as Commander Murray, Sub-Lieutenant Phillips, and Chief Petty Officer Pertwee are about to find out as they bounce along in the back of a military truck on the way to somewhere. All I know is, officers and gents assembled, there is something cockeyed somewhere. Look here, for the last two hours, we've been driven around in this elderly transport, never decreasing circles, with possible consequences that Pertwee's think box don't dare contemplate. And what happened to you two, eh? Well, you was whipped willy-nilly into Captain Povey's office for a short, sharp chat. And having been short, sharp chatted, was slung out of his senior service sanctuary into this vintage vehicle, knowing what I what not of. But not what not in. But we are still waiting to know how he got what not in. You know what he was talking about, Mr. Phillips? Not the foggiest, Commander Murray. I got lost after the first willy nilly and got not what it. Now, well, Chief, Mr. Phillips and I walked into Captain Povey's office, and as soon as he saw us, he started to laugh. He never stopped laughing. In fact, the whole time we were there, he laughed himself. And Sub Lieutenant Phillips to see you, Captain Purvey. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, do come in, gentlemen. <laughs> Won't you sit down? No. <laughs> We're in the muck. Yes, about 14 tons of it. <laughs> oh, nonsense. <laughs> You'll have a wonderful time. <laughs> and if you don't, I shall. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Purvey, sir, before you have complete hysteria, will you tell us what is this wonderful time we're going to have? Oh, it'll be a pleasure. <laughs> You're going on an exercise straight away. <laughs> oh, right, sir. I'll get Troutbridge ready to put to sea immediately. Oh, no, no, that won't be necessary. <laughs> no, on this exercise, you won't be needing your ship for quite some time. <laughs> Oh, there's a truck waiting outside for you with certain members of your crew aboard. So off you go or you'll be late. And that won't go down at all well where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, sir, where are we going in this truck? Oh, oh I can't tell you that. No, all I can tell you is that you're on exercise escape POW. Good morning. <laughs> But he must have told you something more than that, sir. No, Chief, not a word. I'm as much in the dark as you are. Yeah, especially with that canvas tied down over the back. We can't even see where we're going. Well, I only wish we could see the time to judge how far we've gone. Oh, I can see the time, all right. My Donald Duck watch glows in the dark. <laughs> all right, Noddy. What time is it? Well, it's exactly beak minutes past tail. <laughs> Donald Duck watch? I thought you had a Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> it always used to be boxing gloves past boots. <laughs> what happened to Mickey then? Well, unfortunately, I dropped him in the wash basin. He was drowned. <laughs> I took him to the jewellers and he was jolly sympathetic about it. There was nothing he could do for poor Mickey. I mean, he got water on both knees. His ears had gone rusty. 
and his little working parts had had it. <laughs> oh, nasty! <laughs> My very words. Unfortunately, the shop hadn't got a Mickey Mouse. So I went to town and I bought my Donald Duck. Actually, we'll have to hope that Donald keeps going. Because <laughs> if he doesn't, <laughs> your watch will be like its owner. A complete dead duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny, come on, Marissa. Very funny. <laughs> and where the ha-ha-ho and he is probably being taken. Well, how the ha-ha-ho and he he should I know? Now, that's where I can help you. You see... I was trained at Dartmouth to navigate absolutely blind. <laughs> <laughs> you were quite frankly, Mr. Phillips, so Pertwee don't care if you were smashed out of your minuscule mind. What Pertwee wants to perceive is A, where Pertwee is now, mm. B, what's Pertwee doing, mm. and C, where's Pertwee going? It's perfectly simple. It was all started by this ancient Greek chap in the year 743 B.O. <laughs> Um, B.O. Before Anassas. <laughs> you see, you see, now, this, this ancient Greek chap did geometry on the side and during the day ran a pie shop. Now, his name was Mr. Thagoras. <laughs> Here it comes. In fact, he was known locally as... Pie Thagoras. I knew it! <laughs> now, now, he had a girlfriend who had a shop next door to a barber's, a chap called Sweeney, who was always on his tot. <laughs> uh, her name was Mrs. Lovett, and she did. <laughs> now, according to Mr. Thagoras, the pie maker, all you have to do is to work out the average speed between two points after allowing time off for good behaviour and traffic lights. <laughs> oh, shut up! No, 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 it makes sense. Don't you realise? that because of Mr. Thagoras's theory, we have definitely arrived. Hang on, there's a lot of chaps walking about outside. It's just the locals going home from the pub. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Donald's beak, it's closing time. Uh, well, I hardly think so, sir. Look, in case you hadn't noticed, sir, them feet are all in step. If they're marching about like that after closing time, either the beer around here is incredibly weak, or it's the local formation dancing team's annual booze up. <laughs> Pilot! Ho! Lower! Tailboard! Up! Back end! <laughs> right! Dismount! One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two! Standing line! Oh, uh, good evening, Sergeant. My name Silence! is... Silence! No talking to the ranks! Now, look here. Commander Murray isn't in the ranks. He's our ship's captain. Shan't warn you again, Blondie! <laughs> One more word out of you, and you'll get a bayonet in your guts! Oh, nasty. <laughs> right turn to the camp commandant's office! Prisoners under escort! Quick, march! Here, one can only hope their rollicking lordships know what's going on, because Pert, we certainly don't. And what's more, Pert, we don't like it. <laughs> oh, do leave oh, all the chattering twits. Look, oh, I'm the Admiral, this is my office. If you don't shut your chattering cake holes, I'll never find out what is that soddy scheme of Lord Pert's order. <laughs> That's better. Oh, I came to be caught up with you lot of boobies. I'll never know. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> caught up with them many a time in Cardo. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> shut your monumental mumbling mush. Mush shut. At last. Right, Lord Quirk, off you go and keep it short because I'll open in ten minutes. As you know, the object of my brainchild exercise escape pow is to simulate actual wartime conditions in the prisoner of war camp. And that's why we sent members of the ship's company of HMS Troutbridge to Camp A Royal Marine Commando as guinea pigs. Oh, that's a crackpot idea. My son-in-law Murray's going to love you for this, and so is my daughter Rita. They've already had words about it, and I'd hate to see those two fall out. Oh, I wouldn't. They fell out all over the place in Cairo. <laughs> yes, yes. Never forgotten it. No, no. Big guns. Yes, yes. Ah. Ah. 
Wow! Thank you, Ren Simpkins. My pleasure, sir. And we've all got a pretty good idea of what that is. <laughs> well, then, I'm sure you all agree with my plan, gentlemen. Now, the object of the exercise is to subject naval personnel to the kind of conditions they could expect in the enemy's hands. Forewarned and forearmed, these men will be able to devise ways and means of escape from even the most closely guarded camp. They will know exactly what to expect. Well, I know what I'm expecting, a large scotch. That open, last one in the bar, pushes me home on my bike. This way. Sergeant, I have a complaint. Sick for AIDS, Thursday week. So suffer. Here's your grub. Lights out in five minutes. Railway building party on parade. Oh, 500 hours tomorrow. Now look here, Mr. Guard, gentlemen. Silence! Right. <laughs> no time to talk to the likes of you. I've got to unleash the dogs. Yes, well, now that the mate's dot all is left, what tempting little morsels have we got to titillate our jaded palates for starters? Ooh, I trust horses doofers. Actually, Chief, uh, that's pronounced hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> you will glance at your plate, Mr. Phillips. I'm sure that you'll agree that horses doofers is nearer the mark. <laughs> oh, dear. Not a lump of black bread, three soya beans, and six grains of rice again. Uh, no, sir. Only five grains of rice. Obviously, the camp commandant thought we were putting on weight. Oh, this is humiliating. Amelty have really gone too far. That commandant chap did say that we were supposed to try to escape, or we'd be here for at least a month, and as far as I'm concerned, that's too long. I mean, it's vital I get out of here by next Thursday. Well, why Thursday, sir? Have you got a date with a bird? No, no. Thursday is the day they deliver my comic. <laughs> well, that settles it. We can't have Mr. Phillips's literary studies interrupted, can we, sir? You're absolutely right, Chief. I should have thought of it myself. Yes, sir. In fact, now you come to mention it, I did. But uh, escape is going to be easier said than done. For a start, the door of this hut is always locked. There are savage guard dogs patrolling outside, and even if we manage to cross the compound, there's the electrified fence. And don't forget the sweeping searchlights that never go out, those four towers at each corner of the camp with their fully manned machine guns, and the, the minefield that's been laid between this hut and the main gate. And if we, even if we manage to get there, it, it's, it's locked up as solid as Fort Knox. I've got an idea. Yes, yes, What's yes. That? Let's not bother. <laughs> <coughs> oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Murray, sir, but before you do your nut, and in case you hadn't noticed, our app door's been unlocked. <laughs> And with due respect, sir, I know you're the camp commandant, but I really must protest at the way I've been treated. After all, you sent for me, said it was extremely urgent, so I dive all the way over from Portsmouth just to be kept hanging around because you're too busy to see me. Oh, yes, you're absolutely right, Polly. <laughs> and I do agree that you have been treated rather shabbily. And I would offer you an apology, except that the hideous Master Perrin is entirely your own stupid fault. My fault? Oh, you clever boy. I knew you'd see it my way. I don't. How could it be my fault? Because you are the idiot who, for purely personal revenge, selected the crew of Trampbridge to be our guinea pigs, and by so doing, made yourself a naughty boy and turned the exercise into a complete farce. Because they won't ruddy well escape. Yeah. Now, look here. I am looking there, and I'm not very impressed with what I see. In a nutshell, Pony, if they don't break for it tonight, I'm going to have an exchange of prisoners. I shall let them out and you in, you lucky boy. Oh, no, 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 you can't possibly do that. Hello? Camp Commandant? At last, Ramona Povey's residence, and this is Ramona Povey speaking. I demand to know what you've done with my Henry. His tea is ready. I beg your pardon, madam. Don't you argue with me. I don't mind him playing sailors during the daytime, but in the evening, he has his chores to do here, and tonight he's supposed to be dusting my dear mother's bust. 
Oh, the lucky boy. <laughs> you tell Henry from me that his boiled eggy has already been on the stove for an hour and a half, and I'm not taking it off until he gets here. Well, that could be at least a fortnight, madam. <laughs> he will still eat it, shell and all. <laughs> Permission to replace the telephone now. Goodbye. What's that? Well, you're not going to believe this, pony old man, but it means that at long last those fools that you sent me are attempting to escape. With amazing daring, your hand-picked crew have finally forced their way through the hut door. <laughs> which my guards were told to carefully leave undone for them. They've skillfully managed to avoid all our savage watchdogs that are all asleep, because I have them doped for them. The searchlights have failed to pick them up, as they cross the compound, as I arranged for the generator to break down for them. <laughs> and as long as they can find their way to the main gate, which was left accidentally open for them, <laughs> they should be away. Oh, do you think they'll make it? I'd say there was a very fair chance. <laughs> In fact, if you look through that window, you'll see the blonde idiot is leading the way with a damn great torch. <laughs> Where did they get it? I had it left outside the hut door. <laughs> Switched on for them. <laughs> Chief, I, I don't think Mr. Phillips can keep up any longer. You're right, Commander on, Marissa. Why are you limping, Mr. Phillips? I, I've hurt my knee. Uh, I, I fell over a sleeping guard dog when we were breaking out. <laughs> oh. oh, dear. What a bit of luck you didn't wake him up. I, I suppose... Uh, I suppose that that was when you broke your torch, sir. No, no, no. I broke that when I bashed against the rifle the sentry was holding at the main gate. <laughs> Bit of luck he didn't notice the noise and was looking the other way at the time. <laughs> yes, well, he would have noticed if I hadn't had the presence of mind to create a diversion. You didn't create a diversion, sir. You fell over an oil drum. Very <laughs> petty. Which reminds me, when we get back to Portsmouth, I shall send in the report as to how sloppy that camp is. Now, you do that, sir. Meanwhile, that leaves us with one tiny little problem. Mm, what's that, Chief? Which way is Portsmouth? <laughs> ah, now, as navigating officer, that's where I can help. <laughs> <laughs> I said, as navigating officer, that's where I can help. <laughs> I said, as navigating... I heard what you said, sir, but how? You can never find Portsmouth by seas. How the drakes, drum and cymbals are going to find it over land? I shall use my Donald Duck watch. <laughs> Christopher Columbus used exactly the same method when he discovered America. Really? That would account for the fact that he thought he was heading for India. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, it's all based on astronomy. All I have to do is to line up Donald Duck's beak with the North Star which will give me due west. Then, provided the feathers on his um, uh, ankle are in sympathy with Mars and the moon in the right quarter is shining on his flippers, according to Gypsy Petula Clarko, <laughs> Portsmouth is either that way or that way or that way or that way. Well done, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> with the aid of sorts, you have discovered that Portsmouth is either North, south, east or west. <laughs> Lummy. Thanks, Chief. Isn't it amazing how you can make astrology work for you? I mean, just think, all because one Sunday morning before church, while he was reading the newspapers in the bath, this other ancient Greek chap who lived next door to Mr. Thagoras's pie shop... Other Greek chap? Oh, yes, yes, you must have heard of him. His name was Mr. Medes. <laughs> known to his friends as Archie. <laughs> anyway... Archimedes realised his papers were getting a bit soggy, so he leapt out of the bath shouting, Eureka! Which is Greek, for Portsmouth is that way. <laughs> Which is a bit of a pity. Because if you and Mr Medes are right, it's the other side of the river and we haven't got a boat. We have, you know. There's one down here by the river bank. Where? 
My word, those cab guards are careless. I shall mention this in my report as well. <laughs> What's that? Well, if I didn't know better, Mr. Phillips, I'd say it was the after effects of those soya beans. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, that's torn it. The dogs have woken up. They're onto us. Quick, into the boat. As long as we cross the water, the dogs won't pick up the scent. In you get, push her off and start rowing. Steady as you are. Steady as I want it. Left or down a bit, Chief. Left or down a bit, it is simple. Nearly there. In. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, ah! And he's out. <laughs> and in. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Phillips. You're running true to form. If there's a lump of sand anywhere, you'll run aground on it. That's not exactly true, sir. What I'm standing on isn't sand. It's a load of dirty, stinking, filthy, soggy-o nasty. <laughs> Don't mind describing it. Push us off it. I, I can't push it off by myself. Jump in and give me a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> P! All right. <laughs> <laughs> right, chap, she's floating now. Start rowing. Well, we could, but it hardly seems worth it. There's only a couple of yards to go. But, sir... Keep pushing. That's some order. And when we get ashore, Mr. Phillips, do come on and marry myself a favour, sir, and stand down wind. <laughs> All right, you rotters. From me to you. I didn't mean push that hard. Come on, chaps. Give me a hand out of the old nasty. Don't <laughs> <laughs> get it. Ow! Oh, or I fire. You just did. Ah. <laughs> That were accident, but put your hands up because it might happen again. <laughs> now, hand over the bunny rabbit. They'll be wanted as evidence in court. Oh, and you in the water, hand over that cod flapping about in your pocket. <laughs> That'll be needed as evidence too. Now listen to me, you trigger-happy country gentleman. We're not poachers, we're officers in the Royal Navy. And we're terribly busy escaping from Camp A, which is somewhere over there on the other side of the river. So you'd better drop that shotgun immediately and... While you're about it... Could you tell us the way to Portsmouth? <laughs> Please? Mm. <laughs> Sir? Ah, now, where's me watch? <laughs> now, let's see. Portsmouth's due south, so all I have to do is line up the big hand with the North Star, and that'll give me due west. Then, provided the little hand's in sympathy with Mars, the moon's in the right quarter, of course. Then, according to Gypsy Petula Clarko, Portsmouth is that way. You see, it works. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Lead on, Chief. We've got a long trek ahead of us. Right then. <laughs> All right, chaps. In here. The whole place seems to be deserted. Thank heavens for that. I couldn't have gone any further. We can all sleep on the floor, up here. With due respect, sir, we'd prefer it if you slept on the floor down there. <laughs> you don't half pong a bit, sir. We were jolly lucky to find this building site. Right, gentlemen, no time for chatter. Get your heads down for a couple of hours and we can be away before the builders turn up in the morning. No one will ever know we've been here. What's the time, Mr. Phillips? Oh, we've got plenty of time for a snooze. It's only beak minutes past flippers. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, so what's that in real time? I haven't the faintest idea. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh. Uh. Right! On your feet! <laughs> hey? What? Pardon? Railway line building party falling outside at the double! What's she talking about? I have an awful feeling I know, sir. Now look here, Mr. Foreman. Sergeant! All right, Mr. Sergeant. What's he doing working on Mr. Powell's building site? <laughs> Mr. Who? Powell. I saw the sign when we broke in last night. It said, Site for O.E. Powell. <laughs> that is not a building site. That sign means Operation Escape, Prisoner of War. And you've just escaped back in. <laughs> 
I thought the top of that wall felt familiar. Silence in the rags! Fall it outside! Right. Grab right. your feet and stumble down! Left, right, Sergeant! Right, Red! Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips have been escaping back into the Navy Lark written by Laurie Wyman and George Evans. Stephen Murray was the CO, John Pertwee was the Chief Petty Officer, Leslie Phillips was a Sub-Lieutenant, Captain Pervy was played by Richard Caldicott, Ren Simpkins was Heather Chasen, Rear Admiral Armbridge was Michael Bates and the Admiral was Taniel Evans. The show was produced by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Thank you.